order of our sovereign Elizabeth, Queen of England, Wales, and Ireland, Mary Stuart is condemned to death. In the history of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, I don't think I've ever been happier to see someone go home than I was to see Victoria. Uh, you know, she has just been the worst, just the worst all season long. Uh, and it's, it's like absolutely mind boggling that she's managed to stay as long as she has. Like what, what are we, week five, week six? I can't even remember. And she's been horrible ever since the start. She'd never had a period of time where she, where she was good. She was just awful. Start till she got sent home. Just terrible, atrocious. And like she is the reason all of this other toxicity and bullying has gone on. She's the one fueling it. You know, look who's involved. MJ, who's still involved in the drama, one of Victoria's minions. Anna, who really fired up the bullying when she brought up that, oh, hey, uh, yeah, somebody sent me a message that Britney was an escort. Uh, just total garbage. You know, those are her minions. Those were Victoria's minions and uh, all that, all this all stems from Victoria and I'll say it before as I did previously, the Bachelor franchise should be ashamed that they allowed her to carry on for this long. They gave her a spotlight and a platform for weeks. She, I don't know how many followers she's gained on Twitter, Instagram, over being on TV and being a horrible person. And that was all enabled by The Bachelor. So shame on you, The Bachelor production team, for uh, letting this fester as long as it did. I'm glad that it's now over, but this was way, way, way too much. Uh, so that first rose ceremony was a lot. We got to see Anna get sent home, Victoria gets sent home, and unfortunately MJ manages to stick around for the entire ep episode. You know, we really got to see just how delusional Victoria was. Like, totally delusional. Like, not even remotely grasping reality. Like, it's not even... It's not, it, I can't even wrap my head around it. It's just ridiculous. And you know, when everything started to come up, like what is the first concern? The first concern is who told Matt? And to me, that tells you everything you need to know about those women who were involved. All they cared about is who told on them. Not, hey, I did something wrong. Hey, I, I didn't mean to make you feel that way. No, it was who told on me. And that moment when Victoria found out that it was Katie who brought things up with Matt, I was thinking, oh no, like what is, what is Victoria going to do? But thankfully, we didn't see things come to a head. Uh, looks like uh, they might come to a head for Katie next week where I think I believe Serena C looked like she was having it out with Katie, which is just kind of bizarre to me, but uh, that'll be something to look forward to for next week. Uh, and these fake apologies, I like, we have to talk about it. So many fake apologies. Like if you're only to willing to apologize for something after you've been caught and seen that it could lead to negative things for you, so it's not even that the bullying came up. It was seeing Anna go home and these other women thinking like, uh-oh, uh, I better do some damage control right now before I get sent home as well. That's not genuine. That's not authentic and real. Uh, that's just you looking out for you. And that's not how things work. Even when we do see some apologies. We see like Victoria being like, oh, you know, I'm always joking. It's like, Victoria, you were just horrible. You were horrible all season long. And that's not just you joking. And if you think that is 
just you joking. Uh, you need an even stronger dose of reality than I thought. All right, let's sweep that all under the rug for the rest of the episode. Maybe we'll touch back on it at the end uh, and get into our actual episode. So we had two one-on-ones and a group date today. First run one-on-one goes to Rachel and you know, Matt really seemed like he's smitten with her. Uh, I think that this was probably the second best date we've seen this season behind Michelle's last week. And I am fully on board with Rachel in this final four. Matt really seemed genuine with her. And it was, it felt more than just uh, like, hey, I like you. This, this felt like there's some real emotions there and that it could go a lot deeper. Uh, this is always one of those dates where every season, like the one, especially on The Bachelor, where the one girl gets to go on this fairy tale princess style of date, comes home with all these, all this clothes, all these brand new designer clothes, the Louboutins, and it is like designed, specifically designed to create jealousy and bring up all the insecurities of the other women. And, you know, if this wasn't on the, on the tail end of all the Victoria fallout, I think things could have just gotten a lot worse around this date. We still s did see a lot of those insecurities with um, like Michelle and Abigail, uh, but not as uh, dominant as maybe we have seen in the past. Um, Matt says he's fallen in love with Rachel. So I think that's the second or third time he's already said he's fallen in love with people this season. So, uh, you know, I think we could get another season where we just have the lead just saying I love you to like 50 people. We're going to get to like the final eight and Matt's going to have said I love you to every single person there. Uh, I really thought this date went well. I'm definitely putting Rachel higher on my list than I had her before. And I definitely think she's around till at least top four. All right, let's jump into our group date. Um, you know, Kit gets a second one-on-one. -on -one, so all the other women find themselves on the group date. Well, minus the women that went home who I overlooked, but whatever, let's, let's just ignore that. And this is... Uh, you know, we're, we're just really starting to see everyone just not really feeling comfortable on these group dates anymore. Like really on the group date portion, who really stood out to you? The only moment that stood out to me in a positive way was when, uh, you know, after MJ was trying to steal the spotlight and get in front of everybody and Matt kind of ran away from her and ran away from MJ straight into a Piper interview where he immediately makes out with Piper. That was like probably the only real positive, positive thing we saw uh, from that, the like actual farm part of the date. Yeah, the night portion, definitely a different story. There were three women that really stood out on the night portion to me, and that was Michelle, who, uh, I'm just fully convinced that that's who Matt's going to end up with at the end. Like, I don't care that she's only been here two weeks. She's already my favorite to win. Abigail, who really opened up to Matt and ends up getting the rose. Hopefully, hopefully we see her get a one-on-one -on -one next week. Uh, I don't have my fingers crossed. I believe we already saw footage of Piper getting a one-on-one -on -one next week. So who gets the second? Uh, well, I don't know. And I'm praying that it's Abigail, but who knows? And the third being Chelsea. Chelsea has uh, had some really good moments lately with Matt. They really seem to be interested in each other. But I really think that they are two people who absolutely 100% need one-on-one -on -one time for anything serious to develop. I, I just don't see their relationship really progressing with just the little group date rose ceremony cocktail party moments i really think that in order for chelsea and matt to get deeper they will need that one-on-one -on -one. all right then we had kit get her one-on-one -on -one date um i've not been too crazy about kit this season but this one-on-one -on -one really made me see her in a different light uh, i've kind of felt like She's almost kind of tried to keep herself separate from the other women. Like, yes, she was involved in the Victoria 
drama a little bit. You know, we didn't really get to see her making an ass of herself like Victoria MJ or Anna did. Uh, but really, for the most part, I feel like she's kind of just kind of just felt separate to me. And today was the first time I really thought that we got to see Kit relax. Uh, Kit look very comfortable and very genuine to me. You know, this was like a totally different person in my eyes. Uh, the date was something that Kit had said was very important to her. So either Matt or the producers are listening and picked up on that and gave Matt and Kit a really special moment. Uh, I liked the one, the one scene in the date where Matt's like, I wonder what a life her life would look like outside of this and kit is just like it would look like tonight and matt just totally totally didn't get it like kit's like hey matt like right here this is it this is what it would look like i thought that was that was a good moment for me but you know kit has really gone from someone i wasn't that interested in didn't really care about that much to someone who I'm probably going to be sad when she eventually goes home because I don't think her relationship is nearly as strong as, you know, uh, Michelle, Rachel, uh, Serena P. Like I, I would say all three of those women already have stronger connections. And then we have other women like Abigail and Chelsea who still waiting for that one on one that could put them over the top. So I don't think Kit's going to go all the way, but I'm going to be sad when she goes. I definitely think that we will see her on Bachelor in Paradise, Bachelor Winter Games, something along those lines, which will be interesting. All right, so we ended the date or the night on a cliffhanger, heading into the next rose ceremony, and that is for a two on one between MJ and Jasenia. So at the group date, uh, some as uh, some accusations basically some facts came out that MJ was also part of this group of people that was being terrible and we all we all watched it We all know it's true and so that led to this two-on-one between Jasenia and, and MJ and first off I just got to say uh, props to Jasenia for just not taking MJ's BS I you know I very think that's very awesome of her uh, and, you know, maybe it gets her in a little bit of trouble in the long term, but I think that she's going to look back on this experience and say, like, yes, I at least stood up and hold, held my ground when all of this garbage was going down. Uh, second up, MJ, I do not think you understand what the word harmony means. You keep repeating it over and over and over. Same with every single argument you are trying to make. Just repeat the same things over and over until they're true. But, you know, if you think what you've been doing in the house is harmony, whoa, I've got a rude awakening for you when you finally go and Google what harmony means because that is not it. So obviously we get a cliffhanger tonight. We have to wait till next week to see MJ hopefully go home. Uh, but if that happens, that will be pretty good feeling to know that Victoria, Anna, and MJ are no longer part of this process because the sooner we're done with them, the better. All right, that is going to wrap things up for this week. Uh, feeling like that's a pretty good long video. And, you know, finally, we can just have some peace. And we shall have peace. That's right, everybody. The witch is dead. Nope, wrong joke. The queen is off with their head. Let's try this again. <laughs>